Hi everybody, this is Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I want to show you how to make the Rainbow Ripple Baby Blanket. This works up very quickly. I believe it is beginner crocheter friendly and it represents something very special to our family. Um, a rainbow baby is a term that is used for a baby born after experiencing the loss of a miscarriage. So it has a very sweet meaning behind it, very special to many people. Well, let me go ahead and show you what you're going to need. For this project, I'm going to be using many different colors from Yarn Bee. This is Mini Maker in green. Each of these has 65 yards. And I'll put a picture in right here of all the colors I'm going to be using. But I also want to mention that you can also use yarn from your stash. And you can make these stripes any size you want. Uh, and you're just going to vary them by using different number of rows and each of these is 100% acrylic and I'm also recommending that you have a crochet hook. I'm going to be using size I or 9 which is a 5.50 millimeter and as always I recommend that you have a pair of sharp scissors and a yarn needle handy. The yarn needle is going to be especially important if you are changing the colors as often as I do, you're going to have a lot of loose ends to hide. And I do recommend when you trim the yarn that you leave at least five to six inches of yarn left so that you have plenty to thread into the needle to hide those loose ends. To begin, I'm going to start with a chain of 129. But before I start that with you, um, I'm going to answer a question that everybody asked with my videos on blankets and that is how can I make this bigger or smaller and you can simply do that by taking the original starting chain of 129 and either adding or subtracting multiples of nine from that number so if you want fewer chevrons we're going to have 14 chevrons in this blanket if you want fewer you just subtract the number nine for each chevron you want to subtract, and if you want to add, you just add multiples of nine. So let's go ahead and start with a slip knot and a starting chain of 129. All right, now we have 129 chains. We're going to begin row one. We're going to skip the first chain and we're going to work a single crochet in the next. Now we're going to skip one chain and we're going to single crochet in the next three chains. One, two, three. After that, we're going to work three chains in the next chain. This is creating the peak of a chevron. And then we're going to work one single crochet in the next three chevrons. One, two, and three. And then we're going to skip two stitches. One, two. And then we're going to do that again. One single crochet in the next three chains. Three worked in the next space or the next chain. After working those three single crochets in that same place, then we work one single crochet in the next three stitches. And then again, skip two stitches, one, two, and then we begin the next chevron. One, two, three, and then again, three single crochets worked 
into the same place. That's one, two, three, etc. And let's stop and take a look at what we have. Okay. So as you can see, this is a counting project, but it's a very easy counting project. It's going to be, once you get past the beginning, which is always going to be single crochet in that first stitch, skip one stitch, and then one stitch in the next three stitches, three stitches in the next stitch, and then one single crochet in the next three stitches, skip two. That's the only number that's not a three. Skip two, and then up three, three in one place, down three, skip two. So go ahead and work that all the way across your starting chain. And again, this is row number one. Once you get to the end of the row, you should have two chains left. Skip one chain and single crochet in the last stitch. Let's go ahead and take a look. And we should have a total of 14 chevrons in this row. Let's go ahead and turn for row two. I'm going to chain one at the beginning and we're going to work through both loops on the first stitch with that first single crochet. We're going to skip the next stitch. Now going forward until the last stitch of the row, we're going to work only in the back loop of the stitch. This is going to give us added texture on the surface. So we're going to skip the next stitch and we're going to work in the back loop and work one stitch in the next three stitches. The next stitch, we're going to work three stitches in the same place. And this should be the stitch that's in the tippy top of that chevron. After that, one single crochet in the next three stitches. Again, just continuing to work into the back loop. Then we're going to skip two, one, two, and then repeat single crochet in the next three stitches. Three single crochets in that top stitch or in the next stitch. And then one in each of the next three stitches. And then we do it again, skip two stitches and etc. So let's go ahead and stop and take a look at what you should be having. Okay, this is what the outcome should look like. So go ahead and work that all the way across and I'll show you how the row ends. After working all the way across the row, we're going to skip the next stitch and working under both of the loops. And remember, just as a reminder, we work through or under both of the loops for the beginning, the very first stitch and the very last stitch and work a single crochet there. And this kind of helps to keep the curling on the ends at bay. So this is what you should have after completing two rows. So now for rows three, four, five, and six, we're going to repeat row number two. I'll go ahead and get you started on row three, which again is a repeat of row two. We do that with the chain one, single crochet under both of the loops on that first stitch, and then skip one stitch, and then one single crochet in each of the next three stitches. Three single crochets in that next stitch one single crochet in each of the next three stitches and then we're going to skip to one two and then we do it all over again one single crochet in the next three stitches etc so go ahead and work rows three through six at the end of row six i will show you the color change so this is what you should have as you round the corner to changing the yarn at the end of the row. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to skip that last stitch and working through both loops. This is the end of round six. We're going to pull up a loop. 
Now we're not going to finish this stitch until we bring in the new color. Let's just go ahead and then we pull that through. And then I'm going to go ahead and chain one, turn, and again we're going to repeat row two six times. Let me go ahead and get this started with that first single crochet, skip one stitch, and then again continuing to work in those back loops. Okay, I just wanted to secure the, the yarn, and of course you know what to do. But for this yarn on the side, we need to get our scissors, and like I said, leave a generous strand so that it will be easy to hide. And what I like to do is I can work just a slip knot like this to just kind of hold hold the yarn in place. Once I get more fabric around I'm actually going to show you how you can hide these in the work without tying in any knots. Okay, so go ahead and finish the six rows in the new color and continue changing after every six rows. And I'll put a picture right here again of the color order I'm going to be using and starting with the green and going down each column of colors. Of course, you're free to use whatever yarns and yarn order that you prefer. And as I said before, this is a wonderful project for just using up those scraps of yarn. All right, I've gone ahead and I have worked six rows of each color and I'm really happy with the results. I'm gonna go ahead and put a better picture of this right here so you can see. All right, so now it is time for us to fasten off and I'll just show you how I'm gonna do this. I'm just going to make a chain and a tug and pull that tightly. I'm gonna take my pair of scissors and I'm going to cut a generous strand and just pull it through and we are done. Well, almost done. We do have quite a few strands to hide, but let me also show you that there is still a generous amount of yarn left, um, perhaps even for another one to two or one to one and a half uh, rows. So I just wanted to show this to you. So. Um, Hopefully you haven't run out of yarn on this particular project. All right, so to hide this loose strand, let's go ahead and isolate just this color here. And this is where the yarn needle comes in very handy. And I'm going to thread the needle just like so. And this technically is the back side, although this really is a reversible design. Uh, the front side is basically where row one begins. It just shows less of the colors connecting than the back side does, but again, you can use this functionally um, as reversible. Okay, so I'm going to have the back side facing me. I'm going to go ahead and bring this I'm going to go ahead and bring it down a couple rows. And the main idea with this is to hide the colors within the common colors of the blanket. It's as simple as that. And this is really the only strand that's going to be technically knotted. So we can work these through the stitches just like so and if you want to bring it back down I do recommend that you bring some tension on it by going one direction like going one direction and then coming back the opposite direction I think that will keep the strand from coming out the best and I'm just running this under under the stitches just like that and I think that's going to be enough. Okay so this is a little bit tight so I'm going to pull back on it so that it doesn't have that tight look. And then cutting the strand close but not too close and you can pull back on a little bit and you can see that that strand 
is hidden from view and and should stay that way okay so now we have a couple others I'm going to go ahead and just show you these because these have not been knotted remember we did not tie a knot there I think it's best to not tie them in a knot uh, N-O-T and K-N-O-T I'm using them interchangeably um, because it will draw less attention to the color change if we do not knot it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it through just like this and I'm actually going to go up a, up a row and I'm just going to run this under the stitches just the way I did in the last example so that's about an inch or so of stitches then I'm going to let me do one more and then I'm going to go up And I'm going to come back down the next row. Just like that. And that should. Okay. And again, I'm going to pull back on this a little bit so it's not pulled too tightly. And then cut close, but not too close. And so that is hidden. And the other one, you also want to make sure see this you want to make sure that this is pulled tightly enough so that the stitch does not stretch out of shape okay so this is the the other one so I'm gonna work this under the stitch itself and again I'm gonna go up a few stitches See, now if the colors were all the same, or, you know, if it was a solid color, it wouldn't be as much of an issue, and you wouldn't have as many knots. Um, it, it wouldn't be a problem, really, to, to make a knot, but I'm just thinking that it's probably best to... Let's go ahead and go down. Down below here. And then I'm going to run it underneath these stitches. Oops, too close to the camera. Okay, so that one doesn't want to cooperate. Let's go down this direction. This is where the three stitches were made. Let's go ahead and go into the next stitch. Okay, so that should be fine. Running it under like this, and then pull. And you can see the stitch join where we joined those two colors and did not knot them. It is very effective to do it this way. So make sure we pull back a little bit. That's good. We don't want this to be pulled so tightly that the stitch, you know, the yarn migrates uh, further up into the stitches. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that all along these joints. And then once we do that, we will have our completed rainbow baby blanket. Uh, let me also say another thing. A lot of times I get questions about, well, what do we do for a border on this blanket? Honestly and traditionally, this blanket does not need an additional border. I am not going to add one because, for one thing, it, it will disrupt or I, I just think it will take away from the, the beautiful colors that are um, crocheted in these orders. Now, if you are totally insistent, you must put a border, for whatever reason, along this edge of these blankets. You can just perhaps do one single crochet per row end and, and work that down the side. But honestly, I do not think you are going to need that, especially if you crocheted the one stitch at both ends, which as you can see, prevents any curling or any disruption of the chevron design. Well, I hope you enjoyed making the rainbow ripple baby blanket with me today. If you did, I would love to hear from you. Please feel free to comment below. God bless. Bye-bye.